Hello everybody, hope the course is going on well. Uh, as you have seen until now, this is not a normal academic course. We are actually learning by doing through some interventions in a specific context. Last week we focused on the problem of sanitation in Ayalapura in general. The lectures focused on a situational analysis of wastewater management in the city and followed a stepwise approach to understand the problem at the town level. Also last week we introduced something called fecal sludge management. Fecal sludge is the slurry that accumulates in your on-site sanitation systems like the septic tanks. If it is not removed periodically, it can potentially contaminate the soil and groundwater. Having understood the problem, this week we will look at the solution space. Particularly, we will explore the different alternatives to tackle the problem of liquid waste management. We will start with different wastewater treatment technologies. This will be taken by Professor Pradeep Kalbar of IIT Bombay and it is a very technical presentation. He will be explaining the conventional model of wastewater treatment, the various processes involved in treatment of wastewater and different types of collection systems. Since our interest is in more sustainable and participatory models, we will be looking at decentralized models. For that we move on to a practitioner, architect Letha Jagopal. She will explain the concept of decentralized wastewater treatment and how she has deployed it in one canal in Alapura. Good afternoon, uh, I will show that you have been already expert at decentralization. So I will not spend my time on why decentralization or uh, why some uh, different approaches. But how to achieve decentralization and uh, what are the different technological uh, uh, technological <coughs> options we have uh, that I will cover in this presentation and uh, whenever you have questions you can ask. Uh, if you see this particular uh, slide where I have put a status of water supply and uh, wastewater treatment in India and as you can see there is a huge gap between uh, wastewater water supply infrastructure that has been created in India and how much wastewater treatment uh, uh, is required. So there is a tremendous gap between uh, uh, generated wastewater or here in this particular uh, session we talk about uh, the sewage which is domestic wastewater. So there is a gap between sewage generated and sewage treated. Okay. So and uh, <coughs> these newer funding schemes from central government or state governments are focusing on uh, matching this gap between the sewage generation and sewage treatment. Hmm. So there is a, a huge amount of funding going to come, Still, it is already has come and but we are uh, and there are so many technologies available for wastewater treatment and uh, which one to go for when and those kind of guidelines are still not there but overall as an expert when you grow in this field you will understand what kind of technology choice you will make in given situations. So I have this all uh, classifications of technologies and uh, I will just touch upon the basic principles of how these technologies work and some case studies where those have been applied. That is the uh, overall frame of this particular uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, so wastewater is basically uh, defined by two aspects, it is quality and the flow and both needs to be considered in the design. Uh, it is not only the quality that will uh, govern the size of the treatment plant but it is also the flow and flow has a different aspect that I will cover. Okay, so it is a quality and flow both needs to be taken into account. And uh, basically we are dealing with the uh, domestic wastewater which is sewage from the urban areas or rural areas from the housing societies, the houses uh, and uh, sometimes we have some small commercial facility that also discharge the uh, their wastewater but that is ac accommodated into sewage. Okay or institutional like these institutions, colleges or some other institutes that also gets accounted into domestic wastewater. And uh, how the domestic water uh, basically uh, varies is basically on the usage uh, and the resultant wastewater is affected by climate, uh, community size, density of development, community affluence, 
dependability, uh, quality of water supplies uh, and uh, water conservation uh, practices. Uh, so these are these are all factors that will affect the quality and quantity of wastewater generated. Uh, for example, uh, a city uh, such as uh, uh, Mumbai uh, will have a very different kind of wastewater characteristics than a city such as uh, uh, Kochi or Jaipur because they have very different climatic conditions, very different uh, water culture and that affects the wastewater uh, quality and the quantity. Okay, uh, so uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, I think you have been exposed to this terminology. Uh, sewage is a mix of everything, and if you just decipher into what is how sewage forms, is basically forms from the black water, from the brown water, and grey water. Black water is a mixture of urine, feces, and uh, uh, the washing water in the toilet that we use. Brown water is a mixture of uh, feces plus fresh water. But when you have the urine separate uh, urine separated toilets, you get a brown water. And the grey water is from the kitchens and bathrooms that we get. And uh, if you if in a city scale, we mix all these three flows and we get a sewage hmm, typically. Hmm. So you remember this particular classification, and I, I guess you already have been exposed. Uh, and these are the typical characteristics by which uh, environmental engineers classify the uh, sewage. Uh, basically, we call uh, a weak, a medium, or a strong wastewater depending on the type of its uh, characteristics. The main uh, concern in, uh, in this particular characteristics is this particular value, which is bio, uh, this <coughs> biochemical oxygen uh, demand and chemical oxygen demand. Okay, these two, this particular parameter you see, this varies or vary here. It is about 100 here, it is about 200 here, and it is about 400 here. So more the strength of the BOD, it more the uh, the, the basically, we classify it as a more strength or more intense uh, sewage. And BOD, everybody understands? Clear? Anybody needs any explanation of BOD? Yes? Okay. So, uh, basically, uh, yeah, any other, so people who understand BOD, what is BOD? Now, don't tell me the long form, tell me the, what it means. Quickly, oxygen required for what? To biodegrade, right? But why we do bio? Why we measure BOD? What is the reason we measure BOD? Organic to know the organic matter and its its requirement, oxygen oxygen requirement. So, it, so basically, BOD is a, not a uh, direct parameter, it's a proxy parameter. Okay, remember BOD, COD are proxy parameter for organic pollution. Okay, so because measuring the total organic carbon is difficult uh, and it's costly, uh, and hence to avoid that, we have these measurements uh, called as BOD and COD, which are proxy for TOC. So, more the uh, basically, uh, oxygen demand of a particular organic compound, it will exert more BOD, it will exert more COD. Okay? So, and uh, basically COD uh, accounts for both biodegradable and non-biodegradable uh, component of the oxygen demand. So, basically by this classification, we have the weak, medium and strength uh, as three uh, sewage classification and depending on that, uh, the technology choice differs. Uh, whichever flow you get, in this particular concentration, your technology choice will differ. Okay, that's the first principle you should remember. First of all, check the BOD. According to the BOD, your classification or the technology choice will change. Uh, yeah, this, these are the these are the main spectrum that you should look uh, look into. And what we want to achieve from this is basically we have to treat, but treatment up to what level is also a question that we should not. Uh, we should have some goal that at what level we should treat our wastewater. So we have the uh, minimum discharge standards set up by the uh, Central Pollution Control Board, and those keep gets keep updated. So you can just go and see the Central Pollution Control Board website and get those uh, different uh, discharge standards. So these are the typical discharge standards which is under this particular Environment Protection Act, Schedule uh, Six. 
after that we have this particular environmental uh, discharge standards. What we need is how much uh, basically BOD and COD and nitrogen is allowed to discharge in a given treated effluent, treated wastewater uh, for different classes such as inland surface water, such as public sewer, this is for irrigation and this is for marine coastal areas. Okay. So as per this, uh, again your whether to treat or whether not to treat, if has city has its own sewage treatment plant and if you have uh, access to public sewer, then you can really don't have to worry about your uh, uh, sewage that directly goes to the sewer and municipal wastewater treatment plant should take care. That's the ideal situation. Based on that, these guidelines are basically fixed. And uh, so, and but when you when you do not have that particular facility, and when you have, a, uh, we have when you have a uh, have to dispose your uh, sewage into such kind of canal or such kind of, or river or a lake, you have to meet BOD standard of 30. Okay, and those are becoming more strict and strict uh, uh, with the uh, uh, new regulations. Uh, but this has some logic. Why 30? Uh, because that much carrying capacity our particular uh, this uh, rivers and lakes has okay so there is a lot of uh, modeling goes into to fix this particular discharge standard assuming there is some carrying capacity available in the natural body and as we push ourselves from 30 to 20 to 20 to 10 to 10 to 5 the cost of the treatment goes tremendous okay so up to 30 all technology spectrum has some comparison okay but as you push below that your costing becomes very different very different hence basically 30 is a very safe number 30 to 20 cost will be tremendous uh, and then you have a train now and you know this uh, the second thing we should uh, think of centralized and decentralized systems and i think you have a train what is the advantages and disadvantages uh, and such kind of small scale treatment, cluster treatment uh, or household level, those goes into the uh, decentralized system uh, uh, discussion. And if we talk about the approaches for wastewater management, I call the term not the treatment but the management because it's a strategy. It's not the one technology you fit and solve the problem. People have been doing that but that's not the solution. Uh, we have to look at uh, how, what kind of management approach we should have for solving this problem. So first is the prevention and conservation. Uh, so before creating the sewage, we should try to minimize its quantity. Okay. So how we can do that is the reduce consumption with this public awareness such as you have like Canal P and other such initiatives. So reduction in the water consumption will give you the more uh, basically less lesser flow but uh, whether your organic load will deplete your BOD will go down or go up if you reduce the consumption let's say in LFP we decide from tomorrow we don't we'll cut off 50 percent of water supply everybody agrees and uh, what happens to your BOD then more or less because I'm cutting down 50 percent of water supply so water will be more concentrated, right? So whether it is good or bad? Bad? Bad for whom? <laughs> bad for whom? Then all question needs to be answered and then we, we can say something about it, right? And as an environment engineer, I like it. It's not bad for me because more strength be, uh, st uh, handling more strong sewage with less volume is more easy than having a sewage with a diluted BOD and a more volume. Okay, so if, for example, Jaipur sewage is more easy to treat than Mumbai sewage because Mumbai has a huge flow and BOD uh, lesser than Jaipur because it, Jaipur has a very concentrated BOD of about uh, 500, 400, uh, whereas Mumbai BOD will be around 200, 200. Okay. Because it gives me advantage in terms of cost, because it, my reactor will be very getting a continuous food that will come into when we talk about the how the reactor works. Uh, hence, our particular uh, this reduction in consumption will give me two advantages. One is direct saving in terms of water consumption, and second is 
I'll get a more strong BOD in the sewage and that will be more easy to treat uh, in a effective manner than having a very diluted sewage uh, and that kind of uh, thing. Okay. And for that, uh, the second strategy, the efficient devices and fixtures and fittings and there can be uh, many more things that you can have efficient uh, devices for reducing the water consumption. So, so those two uh, particular uh, approaches, one is pre uh, prevention, conservation and uh, then the basically recovery, recycling and treatment. So read it from right to left such as recovery, recycling and treatment. Okay. So recovery in terms of we cannot have nowadays a treatment only for the sake of treatment because of the cost involved, because of the kind of operation and maintenance that these treatment technologies require. Uh, spending so much money is not possible for government bodies. Hence, we should have such a plan such, uh, that we can recover the energy, nitrogen, phosphorus and resources. Uh, and then uh, uh, whatever treated effluent we should recycle and hence the treatment, not the only for the sake of disposal. Okay? So that's the whole paradigm of wastewater management we are uh, going into. And in terms of how we enable these three things is one is household or building level treatment. Okay? Uh, that's the where the starting point of the discharges. Second is decentralized treatment schemes. Okay? And third is the centralized when you have collected everything together uh, and and when to, when to call something decentralized and centralized, there are not fixed guidelines. Those uh, basically, there are uh, depend on the population density, depend on the city scale. So, uh, but yeah, means as soon as you, you, you decide that I, I don't want to create only one single treatment plant at, for a given location, you are thinking in decentralized manner. <laughs> so, uh, Basically, the classification for this centralized, decentralized system uh, is given in this particular book by Professor Asibala and uh, Professor Sulekar, where you have the centralized uh, sewerage system, uh, which basically has a wastewater treatment plant, uh, which can be mechanized or it, it can be based on natural treatment system in a centralized manner. Uh, and basically, uh, you can have the offsite disposal or to water bodies, to land, or you can uh, reuse for irrigation purposes. Okay, so that's the centralized scheme of the uh, uh, thing. And then in the decentralized uh, sewerage system, you have the wastewater conveyance locally, uh, and system plus toilets, uh, septic tanks with soap pits or trenches or further treatment before surface discharge, and pack, uh, package treatment plants, uh, natural treatment systems, pond, constructed wetlands, horticulture, etc. And then uh, dry sanitation systems. Uh, uh, which are like uh, not much commonly used uh, and th basically this is the classification of uh, centralized the wastewater treatment schemes okay so uh, so uh, coming to the now treatment part okay one by one we'll go from building level to the community level to the uh, centralized systems okay any questions until here so uh, buildings are the start building or houses are the starting point of wastewater discharges and controlling and treating flow at building help in reducing burden on city level infrastructure okay so you may have some intervention at the building level uh, which can be helpful to reduce the organic load on the uh, city scale or whatever treatment plant uh, that municipality may be planning uh, and oil and grease may be trapped at the building level or if you have a big kitchens or restaurants this generates huge kind of oil and grease uh, for example in uh, Alapi you have so many spas uh, where they use a lot of oil for therapies so those have very high organic matter so it will be basically uh, giving you a lot of load so you can have basically this spas should be having some oil and gas uh, trap for their uh, uh, that's the first level of intervention and then septic tanks are practiced in cities where uh, underground drainage schemes is not yet implemented because uh, underground drainage schemes cost a lot so uh, cities in India have emerged like having septic tank and then open drain and that whatever uh, reduction happens that is 
going into rivers. But that was fine 30, 40 years before population was not that much. Now the urbanization has grown a lot and that much intervention is not enough. Okay, So this plus something additional has to be there such as decentralized treatment plan or centralized. Uh, and in the building level you have the twin pits and there is a very nice handbook by uh, EVAG which is a Swiss agency for water uh, and it gives a very nice classification of sanitation technologies. Uh, it's a very good handbook at uh, your level when you start to understand the concepts of sanitation technologies. So it is called Compendium of Sanitation Systems and Technologies. Okay, And that is that is the representation I, uh, I obtained from. Uh, that's a twin pit toilet and I think you, you must have been exposed uh, for twin pit, how it works. Right? Anybody not knowing twin pit system? One person, then I have to explain. Two person, yes. So basically twin pit is, you have this particular uh, toilet and which is a flush water toilet, okay? So basically people use this flush water and twin pit is because one pit will be active at one time and once this is filled, uh, this will be closed and this remains there for a year so that it will be uh, composted, decomposted bacter bacterial activity will be there and it will be just humus, okay? Fine humus of the years so and that can be used for agriculture uh, applications, okay? And then the second pit will be active in that time. So by that time this pit fills, you empty out this pit and this system will work. This is a very good system for rural areas okay. or peri urban areas where there is a, a land or uh, you know, there is a practice of having uh, uh, this particular leach pit. And then you have the septic tank that is the second level building, uh, second building level intervention and septic tanks are basically uh, again uh, a tank for uh, uh, which basically do not have any design treatment but because of the nature of uh, bacteria in anaerobic condition they live there and start de decomposing the organic matter in the black water and septic tanks are typically designed for ha handling the uh, this particular uh, uh, black water only and we have the IS code for uh, which gives the design guidelines for septic tanks okay uh, and there are many other books uh, and this particular compendium that I showed which also covers this particular septic tank uh, details and with the buffer it improves the efficiency in terms of all the solids are collected in a one baffle before so that the outlet will not be having any solids okay uh, so basically septic tank is based on a simple principle that you retain the sludge uh, and that will start decomposing anaerobically okay and uh, that's the uh, main purpose of septic tank and this size basically is governed by how much solid, uh, how much solids per day per person generates. Typically, it is assumed that about 30 to 40 liters per year uh, per uh, per person is required for holding this sludge for one person, and then you need additional amount per day for whatever uh, flush water that generates. Okay, so that is basically some retention time for that. Retention time means. Uh, <coughs> Basically, whatever volume it has divided by the flow, V by Q, is your detention time in terms of minutes or hours. Okay, so all these treatment plants has a basic parameter of detention time, which is V by Q. Okay, volume divided by uh, discharge. That is whatever input you are sub, uh, applying to the uh, this particular any any unit, whether it is septic tank or whether it is a complicated wastewater treatment plant. It has a simple uh, basic one of the parameter is detention time or it is hydraulic retention time and then uh, if you want to go for more complicated systems in a, at a building scale for a very urbanized cities or hotels or uh, multi-story buildings uh, we have a set of array of technologies uh, i will explain the details later but the scheme i'm explaining here at the building level so you can have the sequencing batch reactor moving bed bioreactor fluidized bed bioreactor uh, membrane bioreactor and which will basically take care of organic load of the sewage okay so first is organic load but that will not be enough for if you want to reuse because if you are making so much of investment i said our objective should be to reuse recycle the uh, uh, wastewater 
So you can see here the multimedia filters, the actuated carbon, uh, this kind of additional systems you can place for reviewing the 100% solids so that your at least the treated effluent looks pure. And then you have the ultra filtration modules also. Uh, and I'll show you one of these examples. And you have to disinfect and then you can re uh, maybe recycle for uh, uh, secondary purposes as air conditioning, gardening, car washing, those kind of things. And this is one of the treatment plant for one high rise building at the basement, okay, where you have this particular uh, screening of the sewage. It's a building level in the basement, okay. And uh, this is called membrane bioreactor. So basically, it's a combination of the biological activity and membrane force. Both both are placed together. I'll explain how it works later. Just look at the scheme, and then you have this particular. Uh, uh, plumbing system, uh, twin public, uh, twin plumbing system or double plumbing system, which take care of uh, recycled water will be used for toilet flushing. Okay, so these plants can be designed and operate because, and how this can be effective because it will reduce the fresh water demand of the entire building. Because toilet flush is about uh, 40 to 50 liters per person uh, in a such kind of lifestyle. So uh, that much amount of fresh water consumption will reduce. Okay, so this is for uh, long term sustainability of the city, uh, these kind of uh, things are available. That These are like more mechanized solutions uh, and more high tech oriented solutions. And if there is a space, uh, we can have uh, a simple natural treatment system also, which is called constructed wetlands in a scientific language, where you have the uh, septic tank at the bottom of the building. Again, this is a high, high rise building. And this is this is the uh, basically a septic tank, okay. And it can be a baffle, baffle, multi baffle with a septic tank also. Uh, and then you have the wetlands. These are designed for a particular flow and particular uh, uh, <coughs> beauty. And this this you will not realize that treatment is occurring there itself, okay. So. You have two sets of solutions. One is completely mechanized, completely high tech. Uh, this is also high tech. This is not low tech. It looks low tech, but it's not low tech, by the way. Okay? It, re it requires a lot of scientific principles to design and maintain this particular facility. Okay? But it uh, gives a very different, uh, uh, basically, appearance that you are using, uh, making the use of nature and uh, treating the uh, waste. Okay? So, any questions here? We'll see. We'll come to the actual principles by which these treatments occur. Okay, and then uh, coming to the community scale solutions, and you can basically club these natural treatment systems and uh, make a community level treatment system, such as uh, this is the waste tab. This is a system from uh, Nehru Nagar, Wazirabad. We have to check whether it is working or not. But when we documented uh, this particular system. Uh, that was that time it was working where you have the multiple waste stabilization ponds. Waste stabilization ponds are natural treatment, basically natural system where you have the pan, pond, there is a algal activity and there is a symbiosis between uh, algae and a bacteria. Okay, so it's a, a very well uh, system, very uh, uh, works with very good in a uh, natural condition. And to improve the night, basically the nutrient removal. You can have one or two duckweed ponds. Duckweeds are again some very uh, specific species for uh, that can grow on the uh, this particular pond. Okay, and then you have the facultative pond for uh, basically for uh, further uh, treatment. So these are the uh, pictures from that particular site, and we have a book chapter which documents all all these sorts of uh, treatment approaches, which is anaerobic pond. Uh, facultative and maturation pond and <clears throat> basically this is the quid pond. Okay, so this is based on use of nature, but you can see the um, the land requirement. Okay, because but this if we plan, I, I guess assume some of your planners. So if you are a planner, uh, if you while grow while you plan a city or while you plan expansion of city, if you leave these spaces for uh, having this kind of treatment, this will basically help city sustain in a more uh, uh, environment friendly manner because if we do not have land we have to go to those machines hmm? and then machines will work to uh, the basic difference between between these two systems is 
this particular systems have low rate of okay, uh, basically pollutant removal whereas the mechanized systems will basically accelerate the rate of removal and hence compact the area required area requirement okay so that's the basic difference one here both of the systems will give the same result at the end of the day one will have slower rate natural treatment systems whereas engineer system mechanized systems will have high higher degradation rate because of we are doing something uh, artificially there okay and that's why your land requirement is coming down and then we uh, come to the centralized collection and treatment okay so i explained the building level i explained the community level and now this is centralized collection and treatment where there are two two different types of uh, collection system one is called combined sewer system uh, where we put together uh, the storm water uh, you see here storm water is connected here and uh, mostly in indian cities except metros few metros we have the combined sewer system because it's more economical uh, so one only sewer taking the uh, and we have very only uh, two three months sorry fall and also uh, so some uh, finite number of days so this kind of system works uh, in india and then you have the second is a separate sewer system which where the sewer is, uh, sewage is taken separately and storm is taken separately okay so these two kind of systems uh, are in place and depending on your design uh, you, you have to make a choice for when you decide a collection system okay so what so assuming that for centralized or even uh, decentralized with some good scale you need some kind of collection system okay and for that you have to keep in mind centralized or uh, basically combined sewer system or separate sewer system <clears throat> and these are some uh, wastewater treatment you need operations and processes okay uh, so basically there are some physical unit operations that we use for wastewater treatment such as screening uh, flow equalization sedimentation flotation or granular filtration and those are used at various stages okay it is it doesn't mean that i started with this that means it comes at the start of the plan it just classification from the uh, physical unit operation uh, point of view and then there are chemical unit operations which are like chemical precipitation adsorption disinfection uh, and other chemical applications and that we take use of uh, bacteria and uh, algae and uh, other microorganisms which are biological unit operations so we make use of three principles physical force chemicals and uh, biology this combination of these three works in wastewater treatment plant okay and in biological treatment you have acted sludge process aerated lagoon uh, trickling filters uh, point stabilization all these things okay so we'll cover that okay good and what are the types of collection system combined and separate and which is more feasible in india or more commonly used in india combined uh, what are the commonly used unit operations and process in wastewater treatment first the three classification physical chemical biological two in physical two names in physical Two in two in chemical chlorination, adsorption, and uh, two processes from biological aerated lagoon, trickling filters, activation process. Okay, good. <coughs> so, any questions until now? Clear? Now we come to the how all these three uh, physical. chemical and biological unit processes or operations uh, there is a difference between operation and a process are put together to have the treatment and as per our guidelines central uh, which we have a central public health environmental engineering organization which we call cpheo which is a agency to develop guidelines for sanitation and sewage treatment and this i'm referring from this 2013 cpcu guideline which basically talks about conventional wastewater treatment plant okay conventional meaning this is most commonly conventionally we have been treating uh, sewage in this manner 
So conventional treatment uh, goes in these two, primary and secondary. Okay, and <coughs> this particular uh, in primary treatment uh, we have the unit operation or process screening, grid removal, and primary settling. Okay, so in the primary treatment we take care of mostly suspended load of the uh, particles. Okay. So suspended load meaning uh, will it remove some BOD? Will it remove some BOD? How come? So some portion, right? Because even if it is suspended, but it can be organic, right? So it will exert some BOD on the system. So primary treatment is very essential, okay? And why I'm saying this because primary treatment. Uh, in primary treatment, we you, we make use of gravity. Okay, that gravity will be used to settle the particle. Okay, now something that can be settled by gravity, uh, it is not wise to put it into uh, reactor, right? Or for the further treatment, because for the further treatment, we are making use of basically additional artificial air to supply the oxygen which will increase the cost of the system because it will require more energy okay so basic principle you should remove uh, basic principle you should remember is something that can be settled by gravity should be used in uh, should be settled in primary treatment itself you should not take it to the uh, secondary treatment because secondary treatment is a heart of the system which is meant to only convert the Biological uh, the dissolved BOD into uh, suspended BOD. Okay, so basically that conversion happens in the this reactor, and there are different types of reactors. Okay, but basic treatment, if you want to remember, first principle is to remove the screen. Screen will help you uh, remove the floating materials such as plastic or something will come uh, that will be obstructed with the screens. Then you have the grid. Basically, sand, silt particles of more uh, large diameter, which will settle, uh, uh, which are mostly inorganic in nature. Okay, those will be removed. And then in the primary sedimentation tank, PST, primary sedimentation tank, or it is also known as clarifier. Okay, primary clarifier. Okay, because that's the settling, uh, uh, settling of the solids. Okay, and then this all very now everything you have removed that is subjected to the this particular biological reactor the most commonly used bi uh, biological reactor is called as activated sludge process okay so activated sludge process is where you see here some part of the sludge is taken back to the reactor because that particular bacteria available in the reactor are active okay and you don't have to basically always put new bacterial culture to maintain the system. You can just part of the uh, system can be recycled, part of the biomass is recycled to maintain the given uh, concentration of the uh, biomass in the system. Okay, so this particular activity process use the biomass to get remove the uh, this particular BOD from the system okay and whatever <coughs> excess so basically this particular uh, reactor will convert the BOD to the suspended form and th that needs to be settled down that's why secondary settling tank or secondary clarifier okay and that will settle down that will be taken part of the sludge will be taken to the uh, reactor and part, part will be wasted that is the excess sludge that system cannot uh, hold or we should not keep that in the system okay uh, so that is thickener and this will go back to the the whatever the supernatant after thickening the sludge because this particular sludge will be very having lot of moisture lot of water into it and solids will be low uh, so handling and transporting of such a voluminous sludge will be costly so typically we use this particular thickener and uh, take take out whatever possible water from the sludge, make sludge more dense and uh, again uh, put it for the anaerobic digester because anaerobic digester will uh, basically uh, 
whatever remaining organic matter is there which is in a concentrated form now can be subjected to the anaerobic bacteria basically those bacteria which do not require oxygen for uh, their metabolism okay so these are the bacteria which are uh, survive on uh, basically other form of uh, sources uh, than oxygen so here uh, in ectodiscless process here we use use of aerobic bacteria in anaerobic digester we use anaerobic bacteria and which provides basically methane okay biogas and hence it, the energy can be recovered okay and then you have the basically digested sludge and also supernatal is recycled pack that is a conventional treatment plant if you understand this all other treatments are variant of this particular uh, scheme okay most of the systems require this uh, nobody wants uh, basically the solids into the uh, biological reactor okay so uh, uh, and this biological reactor varies but basic principle of recycling this biomass active biomass uh, remains the same hmm? any questions here that's the most important part of understanding wastewater treatment <coughs> and this looks like in a uh, graphical representation the screening is happening here uh, bar screens are placed uh, then this is the uh, grid removal this is primary clarifier uh, you see the oxygen is supplied here from some external source okay because we have to maintain the bacteria in act aer uh, aerobic mode hence we have to supply some air from the outside and uh, that sludge is settled and taken down for sludge processing okay uh, coming to the variants of this particular treatment systems one of the conventional treatment plant works on a principle of basically this biological reactor activated sludge and bacterial mass is in suspension okay it's a completely in sub suspension okay that's why those are classified under suspended uh, basically uh, uh, treatment methods but we can attach that biomass to some media okay so that is another classification so wastewater treatment methods or techniques that if you want to call one is physical chemical which are like this using the physical uh, and chemical actions or physical forces and chemical uh, uh, using the chemicals which are like uh, screening sedimentation ion exchange multimedia filter adsorption uh, some membranes reus osmosis and this all have had its own uh, particular unique purpose and when to use and when not to use okay and then you have the biological system uh, that classifies under first aerobic and anaerobic aerobic where oxygen is supplied and bacteria are aerobic bacteria and anaerobic are where the bacteria are uh, uh, survive without oxygen and under them you have the contact base you uh, upflow anaerobic sludge blanket uasb upflow anaerobic sludge blanket then you have the sludge digesters anaerobic ponds uh, those are there then the, you have the in aerobic you have the suspended growth and under suspended growth you have the active sludge process extended aeration aerated lagoon waste stabilization ponds okay and then you have the attached growth where you have the uh, bacterial mass is attached to some media okay in all these technologies bacterial mass is in a suspension and then uh, you have the trickling filters uh, rotating biases land uh, land treatment constricted wetlands and vermiculture these are the attached growth processes so any questions here this is the basic classification you should remember for any wastewater treatment okay